So we left Lisbon, took a very long ride, about an hour, through some very winding mountainous roads. I'll try to get some video of those along the way back. Uh, it's too dangerous to drive and film. Um, and I needed my co-driver even to help me find our way here. We're at Palaça de Pina. Maybe saying that wrong, pretty sure I am. I don't speak Portuguese. But I saw a picture of this castle and I said, I have to see it. I mean, I absolutely have to get here. So here we are. This is steep. This is a beautiful castle. I'll show you as much as I can. Pina Palace is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and is one of the seven wonders of Portugal. Located in the municipality of Centra, along the Portuguese Riviera, the castle stands on top of a hill in the Central Mountains above the town of Centra and on a clear day can easily be seen from the city of Lisbon. On the day that we visited, it was clearly not a clear day and it felt as though we were walking and floating amongst the clouds as we walked around the exterior of the palace. The palace is a national monument in Portugal and constitutes a major example of 19th century romanticism. Completed in the year 1854, the castle was designed by William Louis van Eswig and King Ferdinand II of Portugal. King Ferdinand was instrumental in the design and architecture of the castle. He suggested the vaulted arches and medieval and Islamic elements be included. These are evident all over the castle and really help to define what is a beautiful example of a romanticized castle. The combination of Islamic arches and towers and medieval elements and doorways are what truly make Pina Palace unique and truly one of a kind. As with so many places that we visited as a family, Pina Palace is another location that it really helps if you're physically fit. The castle sits in the mountains on top of a hill and all of the terrain leading up to the castle is very steep. You're gonna be walking uphill for several minutes at a time to get from one location to the other. And the castle is also very large. So it is a lot of walking involved, although the sights are absolutely beautiful. The palace is fully decorated and furnished in its interior and you can easily spend well over an hour walking through the rooms and looking at the bedrooms, offices, toilets, bathrooms and just the living spaces of former kings and queens. The main living spaces within the palace surround a central courtyard. The courtyard is tiled in Islamic style. This Islamic style tile is carried throughout the entire palace. There are entire rooms that are tiled for the ceiling. This level of tile work is absolutely exquisite and would have taken artisans an immense amount of time to complete to the level of perfection which is on display.
pelos de la marca. Look at this. I would have taken so much time to complete. The main kitchen and the service of the palace. At the back, there are three chimneys interlinking with three wood fire stoves, of which only two survive. At the back, on the right, there is an oven. The copper utensils are marked with the symbol PP, Palace of Pena, and the crowned monogram of King Ferdinand II. So I've, I've visited several castles before and a few palaces. This is the most colorful palace I've ever been to. Neuschwanstein, and Neuschwanstein in Germany is a beautiful palace as well. But this one is so colorful on the outside with the yellow and the reds. The fog is rolling in and so we can't see out. If, we'd out, if the fog was not here, you could see out into the sea. Uh, you can see the city down below, but you can't see that with all the fog rolling in, which reminds me also of like uh, San Francisco Bay Area, the hills there. But this is a really beautiful castle. It's going to close. It's about 6 p.m. We have about 15 minutes before they close. So we're going to do a little bit more view sightseeing and viewing around before they close it down on us for the day. That is cold coming through there. Let's go in. Look at the, look like that golem up there, holding up the, holding up the, uh... He's holding up the tree with all the leaves.
Hi, we just finished touring the Pena Castle. It was really pretty. Between the frescoes, the tile work, all throughout the, the palace, it's really, really worth it. And it has great views up here. Let's go. We took a bus up, but it's late, everything is closing down, and so we have to walk back down, which really isn't that big of a problem. It's just a nice, steep walk down. We'll be down in five minutes. Take your time, don't run. I'm not running all the way down there. So, we're losing daylight, but the palace is connected to a beautiful park as well, which would have been, I believe in the past, the palace grounds. And there are these beautiful trees and uh, just, it's really pretty. So we figured we'd hang out for a minute and check out the palace grounds as well. Check out this park area. Just take a quick look. It's massive. It extends all the way around the castle. We won't be able to do it all, but we can at least see a little bit of it to further you know, enjoy our, our time here. Pena Palace is a beautiful palace. The colors, the architecture, the design, it is all absolutely wonderful. Portugal is also a great country. If you get a chance to visit, I highly suggest you take it. Pena Palace sits about an hour right outside the capital of Lisbon. It's easily accessible by vehicle or by tour guide or bus. We decided to drive because we're drivers. We also left Lisbon and went down to the Algarve to visit the beaches. So check out those other videos that we did while we were visiting Portugal. If you ever get the time to visit Portugal, please do. You will not regret that decision.